What's up everyone? This one is uh, mainly for the coaches and trainers out there, but it can also be for the athletes. Uh, today I just want to let you know that you're not going to have a perfect career. You're going to have mistakes. You're not going to be the right coach for everyone. Um, I have lots of examples of these. I don't, not lots and lots and lots, but uh, I have examples. And uh, so today I just want to kind of talk about those. Um, let's start off with, you're not going to be the right coach for everyone. Um, everybody who walks through these doors, not everybody who's walked through is still here. You know, obviously there's reasons like they have to move away, the job moves them or something like that. But uh, not everybody who walked in here uh, is still here. Uh, and that sometimes can be uh, a very hard pill to swallow, especially like the first time it happens, the first few times that it happens, um, you really beat yourself up. Well, I mean, if you care about, you know, your your image as a coach and what people think of you as a coach and your you know if this is really what you want to do as a profession it's it's going to eat at you you're going to start nitpicking yourself apart and wondering where things went wrong and um it took me a while to really understand it i had heard this before it happened so even though i'm telling you this now doesn't mean that it's going to be easy for you to accept it when it happens um but at least it will be back there in your head somewhere uh, and can help you through but you're not going to be the right coach for everybody um, so an example I had a uh, I had a client that was working with me and this client was making really really good progress and uh, you know even people that were watching her train were like man like this is you know you've made some incredible progress like we can all see it um, you've done really really good but uh, the progress isn't what that person wanted or they couldn't see it or you know there's a lot of dynamics there psychologically and just personally uh, when it comes to a client being able to see their own progress and so this client started wanting me to train them a specific way and this is not how I typically train people and uh, you know as a coach your job is your life. It's not your job. It, it is your life, uh, especially for somebody like me. Like this is my business. I spend all day here. Um, I don't want to be. I don't want to feel like I'm trapped here doing a job. I want to be here. I want to want to be here. And when I'm here, I want to be doing what I'm passionate about. And so, how I train people is, you know, that's my life. Um, and the way that this person wanted to be trained was not how I want to train people. <clears throat> and uh, they, they were very upset about, you know, that I, I didn't want to write their programs the way they wanted to. But honestly, it sounded like they knew what they wanted and they could accomplish that without me. So um, you have to let those kinds of clients go. Um, I've had parents bring kids in and after a while, even though the kids were showing really good signs of progress, parents were like we're gonna try Pilates <laughs> okay <laughs> you know you, you have to learn how to not take those kinds of things personally um, and you're also you're gonna make mistakes even though hopefully your intention is to really really help people um, it doesn't always work out uh, like okay so if you if you're familiar with me you've been following me for a while you are probably aware of how much effort and how much you know how much I put into uh, education my education both as a coach but also as a therapist um, being an LMT trained in many different modalities um, I take my uh, therapeutic profession just as seriously as I take my coaching profession I really, really want to help people. And I feel really good when somebody's come to me and they've been to several other people and and then they you know they get on my table and I work with them and they are just astounded at the progress uh, that I'm able to make with them or you know how I'm able to help them get through injuries and pains and things like that. Um, that is a really, really good feeling. And I take it very seriously. Uh, it's something I'm, you know, a very pat it, it, it helps reignite my passion for that aspect of my my work um, so uh, I really want to help people in, in therapy and I have nothing but good intentions right and educated intentions uh, when working on people uh, but there's 
there are there's a lot of things working dynamically when you you put your hands on somebody that for whatever reason it just doesn't work out um i i believe any of the um uh, any of any of my my friends my colleagues who are you know i consider much better than me at those things that follow this uh you know five rings barbell um i think that they will echo that as well is that even as good as they are sometimes there are people that they put hands on and it just does not work out for the better and uh and that happens that happens and that's again you know obviously a lot not all you coaches are are uh therapists but i believe most coaches fall into you know in addition with their coaching they are either working soft tissue or they're working nutrition uh, and you know and they 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 like to specialize in one of those two things and even nutrition even though that's not my gig um that's still something you're going to have to kind of accept that you uh, you know working with clients nutrition their supplements and their body composition not every client you're going to be able to make progress with and uh and even in coaching right coaching is is something that you know i, I feel very very educated on I feel very confident. Anybody who walks in here, I can coach you towards your goals. You know, as long as they fall under fall under my umbrella of coaching, I try to stay with what I know. Um, but even coaching, uh, an example is just last night, right? So I have a client I really care about. And I try to be very, very uh, uh, careful with this client. Uh, I educate them on every movement that they do, and I make sure they understand what they're supposed to be doing. Um, but you know, in a workout. A client may perform 30 repetitions of an exercise, just, just say, right, 30. Well, how many times does it take to uh, get an injury? It only takes one, right? And that's something that my clients hear me say here all the time. Life is not a video game. You don't have a health bar that chips away every time you make a mistake. Um, no, you get one bad rep. One bad rep is all it takes to injure you, to set you back a week, you know, make you have to back off training for a little bit. And that happened just last night. Um, the very last set, the very last one or two reps of, of this particular exercise, uh, the client performed the exercise in a way that uh, it, it led a little bit of, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say a full-blown injury, but um, they, they couldn't finish the workout uh, as written on, in the program. And, you know, when those kinds of things first happened to me, uh, it, it really beats you up because you're wondering what you're doing wrong, right? But com coaching is a is a two way street. It's a communication. Um, a coach can give a client all the information in the world. It can be technically sound, straight out of a textbook, a hundred percent accurate. Uh, but then again, it's up to that that client, that athlete, to take that information and make and apply it every rep to apply it every day if it's nutrition, right? To apply it every day if it's like homework, like a therapy homework, stretching or taking care of themselves. It's up to that client to then take it and make it their own. They have to make that rep happen. You can't lift the weight for them. Um, and yeah, I wanna digress here a little bit. Um, growing up, I was really into the, the old martial arts masters and one of them, my, my favorite one was Moriai Ueshiba, the founder of Aikido. And I remember reading one of his books and he was recounting to his students the mistakes he had made in his life. <clears throat> and they were things like he could remember when he took a step upstairs one day and he was off balance. Uh, and if you know anything about Aikido, it's about it's always about being in control of your balance, throwing other people, right? But he could remember days where he, he took missteps and he was off balance. He could re remember when he was setting up for a move and he did it out of order just one time. And uh, I think that that's a common trait among masters in any profession, right? Not saying that I'm a master, but I think that mentality is something that you have to really be aware of. Um, it is a flaw, it's also a blessing. It's a double-edged sword, right? So you have to be aware of that, that you're gonna beat yourself up over these small mistakes, or I wouldn't say what happened last night was small, um, but I would say that you're gonna beat yourself up over mistakes. But those are also the things that are gonna make you better, right? So like, as again, as example, last night, I'm aware of what happened, and I've already reviewed what could I do maybe a little bit better or um, what could I really reinforce uh, every rep or every set, not only to this one client, but just to anybody and 
uh, how to be better from it, right? So that's the message, right? You're gonna, you're gonna make mistakes. You're not gonna be the right coach for everybody, but how do you use those experiences to make yourself better? Do you want that information? Do you want to know when you're not you know, doing something good, when you're making, making a mistake? That's something else you really gotta ask yourself. If you think about things that you're really, really passionate about, it doesn't have to be coaching. It doesn't have to be the sport that you're an athlete in. It could be anything like hobbies. Um, we'll just pull something random out, right? So um, let's say that you are passionate about racing cars. Okay, anybody who's passionate about anything, let's talk about racing cars. You go to a track, you, you make a lap around the track. You ask, you want to know from a professional, what did you do wrong? What could you have done better, right? Because you're really, really passionate. You want to get a better time. You want to know what you've done wrong. And you need to think about that, about yourself as being, you know, being a coach, being a trainer, being an athlete. Are you finding yourself asking people, what are you doing wrong? What could you be doing better? Do you open that conversation up with your clients, your athletes? Hey, um, I've been training you for six months now. Are you happy with not only your progress, but are you happy with how I'm coaching you? Um, uh, if you're a trainer, if you're a coach who owns your business and you have trainers underneath you, if you have employees, is that something that you ask your employees? Hey, I've been, you've been working with me for a while. Um, what could I be doing better as your boss? If you're not asking that, you know, you really got to ask if this is your, what you want to do for the rest of your life, right? It can be uncomfortable, um, but those are necessary questions that you need to ask routinely and have answered and be prepared to take that feedback and grow from that feedback if you um, are serious about making this your profession and being at the top of the game. So again, I make mistakes. I am not the best coach for everybody for sure, um, but I use that information every time it happens to become better, to learn about who I am a good coach for. Every time, I didn't mention that, but when I, when I meet the people or when those situations arise and I, learned, I, and I learned that I wasn't a good coach for this person or I'm not a good coach for that person, um, that helps me to realize who I am a good coach for and it helps for me to really focus my energies into those people more. And uh, it helps me grow in that manner. Um, you need to, you know, maybe this is a bad example, but like <clears throat> Ferrari knows what they're about, right? They're not trying to appeal to uh, soccer moms, like, you know, people with large families. <laughs> they're not trying to appeal to off-road people they know what they're about and they're very good at it. And uh, so, you know, you kind of need to have that same, that same mindset as a coach. Don't try to please everybody because then you'll please nobody and you'll just make yourself unhappy. Um, use those instances where you find out who you're not good for to learn about who you are good for and really thrive in that area. Um, so again, I hope this was very helpful. Um, <clears throat> Every time one of those things happens, it is a moment for you to grow and become better. Let me know if uh, I can expound on any of those areas for you and help you. Uh, thanks for watching.